Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. Well, it's time to close out that series entitled, When the Sacrifice Got Up. Come on and go with me. Let's close it on out. The Bible says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for your only begotten Son, Jesus. Thank you, God that you have made a way whereby any man that calls on the name of Jesus. I, oh, Father, you have made a way for all to come into the ark of safety. That is through by the blood of Jesus coming through by your son. So, Father, as I conclude this series, I pray for those, Father God, that you are drawing by your spirit. Those who have been watered, hallelujah, by your word. Those, hallelujah, that have been witnessed to, Father, I pray and I ask in the name of Jesus that they would surrender their lives to you, Father God, that they would no longer fight against you, my Lord, but they would humble themselves, Father God, recognizing God that, hallelujah, there's no other salvation apart from Jesus Christ. And so I pray for this world, my Lord, hallelujah, I pray, God, and I ask in the name of Jesus for a refreshing. I ask in the name of Jesus for a revival to break forth, God. I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord. Oh, God, hallelujah, that we, Father, would be those that are sensitive to your spirit, Lord. Those that are willing to go into the field, Father God, and be a witness for you. And so, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, as I minister the word, Father, I pray that your word go forth in power. I pray it go forth in clarity. And I pray, hallelujah, that it be saturated with your anointing, my God, for those that might hear, Father. Hallelujah. That they might say, what must I do to be saved? And so, Father, I give this time to you. I pray that you bless it, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I ask, Father, that you would lead me by your spirit so that your people would be edified and you would be glorified. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, God, let it be acceptable in thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. I pray and I ask these things, my Lord, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. When the sacrifice got up, he didn't just get up per se by himself. But on the shoulders and back of our Savior was millions of people, those that were depending on him. Hallelujah. Even if you think about those of old that had died before his crucifixion, those that were waiting on a Savior. You know what? I like what the book of Romans says in a Romans 6, 4. The word of the Lord declares, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, and so we also should walk in the newness of life. The Savior got up, and guess what? For all his sufferings, guess who benefited? We benefited. So isn't it befitting that we, you know, that have received so much, we give all the glory to God. We give all the honor to God. We give all the praises to the one whom it is due. Hallelujah. And because Jesus Christ was crucified, shouldn't we crucify ourselves, you know, crucify ourselves to the flesh? 
and give our all to him. Didn't the Apostle Paul say in the book of Romans, the sixth chapter and the 11th verse, and he say, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. I want you to know tonight that Jesus did his part. Shouldn't we do what, you know, he asked us to do? And as I close out the series, I want you to keep that in mind. For we are to be witnesses unto the Lord. We are to go out and tell those that Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He rose with all power, hallelujah, and authority. And so I want to look a little closer as I close to see, you know, when the sacrifice got up and he was headed back to his kingdom, what did he say to the disciples to help them kickstart the church? What was his last conversation? How can we be better witnesses knowing what we know? Let's take a look as we close out this series. The first point that I want to make, if God's people are going to be effective in their witness about our Lord and our Savior, we must know and understand that he's alive. Hallelujah. Matthew 28 verses 7 through 8 declares, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples the word. The only thing that the enemy can do, I want you to know, is to try to get into your head, you know, your thinking. For if he can get into your thinking and cause you to agree with the lies that he tries to tell, you know, if he gets you to agree with him, then half the battle is won. That's why it's so important for you to read your Bible. That's why it's so important, you know, for us to go to church. That's why it's so important to fellowship with other Christians. That's why it's so important to allow the Holy Spirit to saturate you in whatever means he decides. He may decide to speak through the man of God on Sundays. Uh, he may, you know, decide and he'll do all of that and much more. And then he may decide to speak to you while you're reading your word. He may even speak to you on your prayer. You have to sp stay in constant contact with the Lord. Hallelujah. Allowing him to, you know, refresh you, rebuild you. Hallelujah. Allowing him to put into you what is necessary. Uh, for the Bible declares uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, huh? rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. Huh? We wrestle against one, hallelujah, that, you know, tries to come against us and hinder us, but we have the victory knowing that Jesus got up with all authority, knowing that it's already done. Jesus has already defeated our enemy. Huh? Then we take a different stance. Huh? We go out in boldness. Huh? The Bible declares huh? we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us, we have a different stance. We are no longer, hallelujah, on the defense, but we are on the offense. We're pressing forward. When the when Paul told us to put on the armor of God, notice that all of the armor was in the front. There was nothing in the back. We don't back up. We press forward. Hallelujah. Because we have the victory. And as we press forward, we do so because God has already won the victory for us. Our God is alive. And the world must know there is one who died to meet them. Hallelujah. The second point that I want to make is that we're going to be effective witnesses about, you know, our risen Savior. 
I want to read what Matthew, the 28th chapter, going back to our text, the 18th verse says, and I would encourage you in your meditation time to read this chapter if you haven't already. The 18th verse says, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. We must know and understand there's none greater, more powerful, than our God. I want you to know that that word authority in the text, it simply means power of choice, liberty of doing as one pleases, jurisdiction, signs of regal authority, a crown. Now we know that when God decides on something, there is no force, there is nothing that can stop our God, uh, when he has decided, when he has purposed it, it will come to pass. And I want you to know just in his kingdom or in any kingdom, there is always a king in authority. And the king has, you know, the authority to run it. Hallelujah. This thought goes even deeper if you think about way back in the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, the first chapter and the 28th verse, the Bible declares, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now there's many directions, there's many teachings out on this, there's many directions we can go with this thought, but for the purposes of this message, I want to think about the fact that God would give man authority. Let's talk about that for a minute, let's think about that. And although, you know, Adam didn't hold on to it, Jesus did. Hallelujah. And if you think about all that Jesus went through, all of the testings and the temptations that came his way, even the, you know, Satan taking him up on that mountain, you know, tempting our Lord. Yet, you know, our Lord and Savior, he did not back down. He did not give up. He did not sway away from what God had commissioned, had called him, ordained him, birthed him to do. He went through that, hallelujah, time of great trial, all because he wanted to please the Father. I like what the book of Hebrews says, um, the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter and the 15th verse. The Bible declares, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. What a powerful testimony. What a powerful witness. And what, hallelujah, a powerful message for us to take. Hallelujah, to give to others that the God we serve has all authority. Therefore, you know, whatever they might be bound by, whatever they're facing, they must know, hallelujah, and our witness must let them know that Jesus can set them free. Jesus has conquered it all. Jesus has defeated it. Hey, uh, he has defeated our enemy. Hallelujah. And my final point for you tonight that I want to make in order for us to be an effective witness for our Lord and Savior, we simply must go. Going back to the text in Matthew, the 28th chapter and the 19th verse, the Bible says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And what I want you to know tonight, what that word means, go, it means to lead over, to carry over, to transfer, to lead or order one's life. If you think about it, that definition is so telling. Isn't that what we should be doing? Going into the world and leading out those that are, you know, spiritually bound by the enemy. By the Spirit of God, we can go in and we can come with that right spirit. Uh, we can come with, hallelujah, the power, hallelujah, and let them know and speak to that enemy in their life that Jesus Christ can set them free. 
Hallelujah. People of God, I want you to hear me tonight. We are living in a world where evil, you know, has become appealing. I never, ever would have imagined some of the things that I have witnessed and some of the things I have seen with my own eyes. Some of the atheists and some of the devil worshipers and some of those who, you know, do not fear God are saying it's so mind-boggling i was looking for a word it's so mind-boggling that people would be so deceived and how evil has been made to look like it's okay you know witches performing spells and i met one um years ago a couple of years ago said she was a good witch you know she didn't pass any bad spells but she just warded off certain stuff and my god people she thought she was doing good she thought that was okay and she was totally you know oblivious to the fact that that is of the devil that is witchcraft of the devil i don't care how they present it whether you know they try to say you a good witch or a bad that's a that's from the pit of hell so i said all of that to say this we have a world that is being drawn away and we need hallelujah to be those that are telling them the right way hallelujah we don't want to think when you think about hell when you think how close how close we're getting to the time when that trumpet is going to sound and when we think about what is prepared for the devil and all of his followers we don't want anybody to spend eternity burning in hell. Oh, we praise God that he has given us a spirit. He's given us spiritual eyes to see. He puts the burden on our hearts, hallelujah, to go into the byways and the highways and tell them, uh, compel them to come on in uh, while there's still time, hallelujah. The ark is not closed, hallelujah. And I'm reminded of Noah, how he built and he built and he built, uh, hallelujah, and no one would listen. Uh, but when the rains came uh, and the flood came uh, and the ark was shut up, uh, oh, and they were bad and I could imagine, uh, you know, they thought about Noah, uh, they thought about the opportunity uh, to come on in. Uh, so we want to be those uh, before, hallelujah, all of the things begin uh, that the Bible declares in the book of Revelation. Uh, oh, great tribulation. We want to be those that tell them to come on in. We want to be those that tell them God loves you. He doesn't want you to go through it. He has prepared a way for you to come on in. Be those that do the will of the Father. Be those that go out. Be those that know. Hallelujah. The time is running out. Oh, hallelujah. Hear the cry. Hear the cry. Hear the cry of the Spirit of God. Hear the cry. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. So bless God tonight. Yes, that we are covered by the blood. We dare not forget those. Hallelujah. No matter how they look, they might have piercings. They may look like, ah, yeah. I hear the spirit of the I hear the spirit of the Lord saying, they may even look like what we perceive as the devil. Faces might be painted. He told by Shata. Ooh, we, hallelujah. They might have black on and black fingernails and hair looking like, you know, they came straight from somewhere. But the spirit of the Lord is saying to you tonight, look beyond, look with spirit your eyes look into that soul that if you don't warn them if you don't tell as god has put it on your heart then you know how will they know if we don't go handy boshata how will they know if we don't go so i pray hallelujah that we be those that go out and tell the lost that Jesus Christ has risen. And because the sacrifice got up, hallelujah, they can get up as well. And I'll close with our text. The Bible says in the Gospel of Matthew, the 28th chapter, the 19th verse, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of 
the age. Amen. We can go in the power of God. For we have a risen Savior with us that is pushing us. Hallelujah. To go and tell others. Will you go? Are you willing to go and tell someone today? Are you willing to let them know that the sacrifice got up? I never want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.